Our very special guest today is a celebrity trainer and fitness expert, and the owner and founder of Core, the hottest new workout in Toronto. He is a former professional basketball player, suffered in sleep days in between seasons in Europe, and recovered by working out while focusing on the core of the body. He has been featured on programs such as Extra, Access Hollywood, and Entertainment Tonight Canada, along with being the first male trainer featured in Self Magazine with Cat Dilly. Some of his other notable clients include Kelly Milly, Daniel Drew, Korean Olympians Patrick Patterson, Zach Eady, and Zewa Retamates. He is a member of Enfa, along with being a Toronto International Film Festival apprentice and donor. And in 2010, he was a notable guest at Kim Kardashian's 30th birthday party. So, guys, help me in welcoming the Canadian fitness expert, consultant, and entrepreneur, the legendary. Joshua Lipsy. Hi, Joshua. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. How's, I just want to say hi to all your fans out there and your、uh, and your listeners. And、uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for taking your time out to be with us today and talk about fitness, lifestyle, and nutrition, everything that you are passionate about. But I want to start with you. You know, to talk about your your journey. Can you tell us more about your personal journey from being a professional basketball player to becoming a celebrity trainer? And and you know, how did it happen? What was the journey like? So the journey was、uh, was kind of interesting. So I mean, I am the type of person that puts you know all my effort, all my time into something. And when I first started playing basketball, it was basketball or nothing. And You know, I, I spent so many hours working on my craft, being on the court, and then, you know, after I was done playing, I kind of didn't know what I wanted to do, and、uh, I kind of just fell into fitness. It just came naturally to me.、Uh, I've always wanted to help others and make other people better. I've always, you know, had that kind of、uh, innate gift given to me, and、uh, I was just able to kind of turn that into what is core today. And、uh, I mean, obviously, there was many steps along the road to getting there, but I think at the end of the day, it was just a passion for making people better.、Mm. And when I was doing my research, I saw that you were actually you got yourself into a, a an accident. And can you talk to us about that? So I was、uh, in a life threatening car accident in two thousand two. I was driving in the U S. On, on a highway, and basically,、uh, my car swerved off. And another car hit、uh, on my side and、uh, caused me, you know, some pretty close to life-threatening injuries that broke、uh, my jaw and my wrist, and、uh, and I had to recover from that. And、um, I think after the accident, I had a lot of problems physically, and、um, I was in the training room all the time. And, and even though I tried to rehab myself back, I didn't have the education or the knowledge to do it properly. So I was bouncing around from physios to chiropractors, and nobody could help me.、Uh, so I thought, you know what? I've got to figure out a way of getting myself back to equilibrium, and I、uh, just started educating myself a ton on, you know, the biomechanics of the spine, and、uh, and was able to do it.、Mm. Okay, and instead, how then you found a solution to to you know be fully recovered, and then you 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 found this new. Workout that we are going to talk about that obviously is your business today. Is that how it came about? So the workout,、uh, you know, I've always had certain philosophies、uh, that I've kind of created, and and this workout, I wouldn't say it came from my my initial、um, my initial ideologies. I think it, it kind of evolved. So I had to kind of live in the industry for a few years and kind of. I, I figured out that there was something missing in terms of having a high intensity workout,、um, but low impact.、Um, you know, a lot of times you, you look at Pilates, and you know, and, and the people love the stretching aspect to it, and they love the, the the toning. But I felt like there was a gap between kind of like that boot camp style and the Pilates, and, and that's what I created here with with Core. Awesome. So, can you now explain to us, you know, the concept behind the core workout and what makes it unique as compared to all the popular workouts out there, like you said, Pilates or even yoga? So,、uh, basically, what we do is、uh, we have these woodway slat treadmills. So, slat treadmills、um, are you know conveyor belts that are in slats, and the idea is it was created in 1975 by a company called Woodway, 
Um, and the idea was basically they wanted a more kind of um, surface where humans could run on it properly in terms of like running outside as opposed to like a normal conveyor belt. So what we do is we use that surface, that slat surface, to take ourselves into certain movements such as lunges, planks, squats. We basically use the treadmill and the angles and the trajectories to work your body um, in all planes of motion. So, you know, it's very hard to hit certain angles when you're working out just in a studio uh, on a flat surface. So we use a lot of angles and we use the slats to push off against an immovable resistance. So there's a, there's a lot of different features to it. Uh, but at the end of the day, what it does, it really fires up the back of your body. And most classes don't focus on that. Um, and we felt like that was really important. So who is this for? Is this for athletes or, you know, like professional um, sports players or for anyone? It's for everybody. It really is for everybody. And, and, I, and I've seen all walks of life in here and all different levels of fitness. And every exercise we do in here, you can regress or you can progress it. So if there's somebody who's incredibly fit, who could be a triathlete, um, you know, then we have those exercises for them. And then if we have somebody who is, you know, ha has an injury or um, doesn't necessarily have the balance or in coordination to go through some of the movements, and we can regress that down for them, and uh, and it's proven to be very effective. Mm. And because you have been in this industry for so long now, and what are some of the common misconceptions people are talking about, or it's popular, whether it's on social media or you know, like what do you see that are not so true, and how do you address them? There's a lot of misconceptions, especially now in this age of social media, where there's so much available information. Um, I think. You know, one of the biggest misconceptions is that, you know, you've got to lift heavy, 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 heavy and not look at, you know, your form and your and your posture when you're doing these movements. And you see people, they run to the gym and it's like, all right, I'm going to try and curl these 45s and their form is totally off. And, you know, when they're swinging and they're using momentum uh, and, you know, that's just not an effective way of working out. And we want to control gravity. Uh, we always want to have good posture. We want to integrate movements as much as possible because at the end of the day, you know, we're looking for longevity here, right? This is, this is what we're looking for. And we want to do movement that's going to help us in our everyday life and give us longevity. So, you know, here at CORE, we really try to avoid isolation movements. Everything's really much, uh, every, everything's very integrated here where we're, you know, our muscle recruitment is, is, you know, basically everything on every movement. You know, it's like nose to the toes where, you know, if you're doing a shoulder press, we are incorporating some type of core movement, whether it's a rotation or a bend or, you know, an eccentric whip, uh, because we really feel like that's important. It's going to mimic the movements you do in everyday life. Mm -hmm. I love that. So what would people expect if they go into your gym or your studio? You know, what would they expect to, you know, because how is it different from other gyms out there? Uh, we're different from other gyms because... You know, we, we really um, did not, you know, kind of follow in the line of most gyms where, you know, there's, you know, some type of machine that's kind of keeping you in one place. So you think about like a spin class or even rowing. Um, we are really trying to cater to authentic human movement, right? You know, although we have treadmills in here, we manipulate the treadmills as opposed to the treadmills telling us what to do, you know? So... Most people see a treadmill and they think, okay, we're just going to run on it. We do everything but running on it, right? So, you know, that's a really important thing because I think at the end of the day, we take movement for granted, especially today. We're sitting in front of computers. We're on our phones. We're not really as um, active as we should be. And I think that, you know, in fitness, why are we keeping people stagnant? Why are we putting people on bikes or recumbent bikes or rowers like we were made to move. We were made to move in all different planes of motion. So I feel like anything that you're working against that is counter-effective to me. I love that. And I was thinking, you know, what what, what else can you do with a treadmill if you are not going to run on it, right? Um, and I, I love that you mentioned about, you know, us sitting in front of the computer all day long. And that happens to me a lot, right? especially having a podcast, like a whole day. But of course, I do my, my workout in the morning. 
Um, so do you have any like let's say if um because most of my own most of my listeners they are also like business owners or people are running on an online business or you know they are working with um uh, you know wider audience all over the world so they have to sit in front of the computer a lot whether it's attending a Zoom meeting or conducting a workshop or just you know having a podcast or talking to people what are some of the exercise i would say in between our meetings that we can do like a quick five minutes workout that we can do to stretch ourselves can you share you know some exercises with us um i definitely recommend picking up like a, a red band so um you know one of those crossfit small red bands and you can do stuff where you have the band you're doing retractions and rows you want to do stuff where you're basically bringing your shoulders back so you could do shrugs Anything where you're using your shoulders, basically. You can hold the band over your head, pull it down to one side. Um, you can do bent over rows. You can do shrugs even. So anything where um, you're, you're basically working on your posture and your core. So what is your current fitness routine? My current fitness routine uh, is, <laughs> is all over the place. I, I'm really busy with, obviously, and I always put my clients before myself. I try to get in some cardio, at least run stairs a couple times a week. I do my classes whenever I can jump in. Um, and then, you know, when I do work out, I work out with my philosophy. So I do integrate a lot of movements. Um, whenever I do push motions, I do pull motions because I always want to stay balanced with my body. When I do lower body stuff, uh, you know, I'm constantly doing forward and back lunges, side lunges, squats. I always mix it up and just try to keep it fresh. So do you believe in having a routine? Do you believe it's important in achieving our fitness goals? Yeah, I think it's very important. I think you have to schedule your workouts. You know, it has to become habitual. Unless you're somebody who, you know, runs to work and is constantly active all day where they'll go for a bike ride and, you know, fitness isn't necessarily in their schedule, but it's their life then you don't have to schedule it. But if it's not uh, a prime component of your life where you're driving to work or you're sitting on the subway, you have to put it into your schedule. It's got to be habitual. It has to be frictionless as well. So what I mean by frictionless is it can't be too hard to do in terms of like access to a gym or access to equipment. If You, you have to make that aspect easier for yourself um, because if you have a gym that's an hour away, the likelihood of you going, it you know, decreases, right? So I think it's really important uh, to make things, I always say to people, frictionless. Just having that really, you know, the gym around the corner or the equipment in your basement, very important. But I also think that, you know, it's, sometimes it's just an excuse, right? Um, and because... If you don't have a gym nearby, you can always go to YouTube and just watch. There are so many, right? Even mm -hmm. I, I believe you're on your YouTube channel, you have a lot of videos for people to watch and just follow through. And so I, I believe it's just an excuse because they are not, it's not important to them, right? So do you think mindset also plays a big part in, in achieving the fitness goals? You know, I think that the access, I, I agree with you. I think the access to information today is is just unbelievable. It's just, it's finding the right information. It's finding the right workouts. Uh, like you said, there's YouTube, there's apps, there is, you know, publications, there's books, uh, there's, you know, online websites, on-demand websites. There's so much for people out there. You know, even like, you know, Peloton, you know, was very huge during the pandemic. Um, but it's about finding what's right for you and what you're going to stay consistent with. Because if you pick something and you know you're not going to continue with it, then you're off that wagon again. So I think it's really important to find something that kind of fits your profile and something that, that makes you happy and challenges you. So my question is, how do we find what is right for us? Like, you know, yeah, how do we find what is right for us? So I think um, it kind of goes back to what I said about being frictionless. So finding something that is kind of easy to access for sure. But I think it also pertains to what you do in everyday life. So what you're, you know, if you're somebody who travels a lot and you're hiking in the mountains, you may want to have something where you're doing hills or you're doing stairs. Um, if you're somebody who likes to play extracurricular sports, like if you play tennis or, you know, basketball, 
you want to find something that's a little bit more high octane where maybe you're doing some high intensity work, stop and start agility, um, strength and conditioning. Um, you know, so I think that stuff is very important. Um, so I think it just, it all relates to your lifestyle, right? Yeah. So how do you keep yourself or your clients and your clients, especially because you always put your clients first, how do you keep them motivated and stay committed to the fitness goal? Because I'm sure some days they will just be like, oh, can I don't do this? You know, I just want to skip one day. I just want to have a cheap, cheap day or yeah, I'm too busy, right? Uh, how do you keep them motivated and committed? And especially during challenging times, I would say. Yeah, um, I think that's a great question um, because I've been doing it for a long time. And, you know, that, that's, the, you know, that's always the motivation for me. It's like, how do I keep people engaged? How do I keep people motivated? And I think a lot of it revolves around identity and kind of, um, you know, what people have adopted and feel about themselves and, and how much that helps them. I think with the pandemic, obviously, a lot of people are working out for mental health purposes. I think it's good for your mental health. Um, but I also think physically people hold themselves to a certain standard. And, um, and I just think that they want to feel good for that hour that they have to themselves. They're coming in here and doing a class and walking out and just feeling so good um, about themselves and, uh, and feeling stronger. You know, I think strong, feeling stronger empowers you so much, right? And, um, you know, like I feel it myself when I, when I'm running after my kids in my backyard and I don't get tired and I'm tiring them out, you know, and, I, and I'm close to 40, I, I feel personally like, okay, you know, like I feel like I'm in good shape and, it, and it's, it's great. And I want to maintain that moving forward, you know? Mm, I love that. And how did you become a celebrity trainer? Uh, that's a good question. I think a lot of it revolved around, I had, um, uh, one client who lost over a hundred pounds that was featured on CNN. And then it just, after that, everything just revolved around that. So basically, um, after the CNN article that turned into access, Hollywood access, Hollywood turned into a bunch of other national TV uh, appearances. Uh, then I started supplying magazines with workouts, uh, because my workouts were a little bit more creative at the time. Now you don't see it as much, obviously with, uh, the new era of social media, but that's what I was doing. Um, and then, yeah, from there it was just basically, you know, just networking and, and uh, being, when you're published in certain articles, I think people talk and, and the word of mouth spreads. How did it feel like to work with high profile clients and what are some of the, I would say, unique challenges that you face working with high profile clients? The biggest challenge with them is their schedules. Their schedules are crazy. They're traveling all the time. They're not eating well. They're not sleeping well. Um, you know, there's times where you have to, you know, t uh, tune things down. You've got to bring things up. You've got to just have to see what their energy levels are like. If they've been filming all weekend, um, they could come in exhausted, right? So um, that's really important. It's kind of getting a gauge for where they're at and not necessarily feeling like you have to, you know, beat them up every workout. You know, it's it's you know, getting in, it's having efficiency with what they do, right? Mm. So if, let's say they have been traveling all week or even months, you know, um, and when they come back to you, isn't it like, almost like you have to start from scratch again? Yeah, I know. In some ways you do. Like, um, I think that, you know, they always get a little discouraged when you put them through a workout and, um, you know, and they don't feel as fit as they did like a couple of weeks before. But, uh, but you just have to kind of stay positive with them and just remind them that, you know, you've been away and muscle memory will kick back in very shortly and, you know, you'll be back to where you were. So, um, yeah, it, it's just, it's one of those things where consistency is key, right? And yeah. uh, you almost hope sometimes that when people are tired, they just show up regardless because it just, it just keeps them in that flow. Mm, yeah, I totally agree. Consistency is key because if you are only going to go to the gym or work out when you feel motivated, when you feel like it, then it's never going to happen because even if none of us feel motivated to go to the, to wake up in the morning and jump out of our bed just to go to the gym and, you know, 
of course, like you said, the feeling after that, after the workout, after that, it's just so refreshing, right? Um, and that's what we are all doing it for. It's for the feeling after, not before that, right? Because it's, it's so hard. And so how do you tailor your approach to meet their individual goals and specific needs when they are like traveling a lot, you know, filming a lot and just not eating well, sleeping well? How do you help them? I think that, you know, you have to kind of, uh, you might have to condense workouts. You might have to do smaller, like 10, 20 minutes. Just doing something is really important. Uh, in terms of the eating and the drinking, it's very hard because when a lot of these, you know, celebrities or high profile, you know, athletes are at, you know, events and they have to drink and they're socializing and it's, it's really tough on the road with the food and nutrition. So you just, just let them know that, you know, just try to be as healthy as you can. You're not always going to have that option. Um, and then with the workouts, yeah, if they have to be shorter, they're shorter. Just try to fit it in and uh, it should give you more energy for the day. Do you have any success stories that you can share with us? Um, hmm, I'm trying to think of a good story for you. Um, like clients you have trained before. Yeah, let me think of what's a good story for you here. Um, Too many. It's a good one. Actually, I, so I can get, so I'll tell you a good story. So when I was on Extra with Mario Lopez in California, so they, they filmed it in the Grove. And um, there was a company who was supposed to send me six fitness models to do the workout because they had we had all the mats laid out and, I, and you know they had this this segment called Workout Wednesday. So it gets to like ten minutes before the segment and the models don't show up. So zero models there, and I'm like, oh my god, this is horrible. Like I'm about to be on like national TV here. I've got no models here to do this workout. It's horrible. So I just started pulling people out of the grove. So just like shoppers. And I just said, hey, guys, do you want to be in my workout on TV? And these like 10 people were just so nice. And they said, yeah, let's do it, man. Just like we'll do it. Gave them T-shirts. They came in. Some were wearing jeans. Like it was it was unbelievable. And uh and we ended up having a great segment because they were just, they were so connected and I connected with them and, you know, just let them know about the workout. But it was just one of those things that could have been a disaster that ended up just working out. Wow. I love that story. I think it's, it's almost, you know, it's more convincing when you are using just normal average people instead of fitness model. To, sure. to yeah because people will be like oh you know they are fitness model who am i right i don't look that great right then they feel demoralized even demotivated so i think that is a good story and it's it's good that they didn't show up right oh, for sure and i was you know i was really nervous when they didn't show up i'm looking at my watch and emailing and uh i just said you know what i gotta have i have to need 10 bodies just to do this workout i'm just gonna pull people so and that's what i did yeah yeah. So when do you see, okay, before I ask that question, what would be your advice for someone who, who is just starting their fitness journey? My advice for them is to, is to map things out and seek advice from people who have a track record of success in the industry. And that's not necessarily your average person on TikTok. Like you really need to do your due diligence and find somebody who's had success with clients who have literally gone from like the bottom to the top, you know, and I think that's really important. Um, I think you have to be patient and realize that, you know, development and fitness, it's not linear, right? A lot of times people think that it's just a straight line. I'm going to lose weight every week. You know, I'm going to get super fit and it doesn't always work out that way. Um, A lot of it depends on nutrition, sleep, stress levels there's just so many factors that contribute to it and i think sometimes people get discouraged when they've worked out for a week it's like you know in january everybody signs up for the for the memberships at the gyms and then as soon as february 1st hits everybody drops off right um and i think that a lot of it is because they are uh, discouraged with not having results immediately you know it's it's really a journey it's a it's a that's why they call it a fitness journey right there's ups and downs there's highs and lows, there could be knickknacks and injuries, and you've got to work around things. Um, so I, I think at the end of the day, you have to almost fake it till you make it. 
right? If you're not a fit person, you have to imagine yourself being fit and adopting uh, those philosophies to get you to where you want to go. You reminded me of a friend. I remember when I first, you know, started my workout journey or fitness journey, you would say, you know, and it was with her. So because you need accountability, like, you know, what you just said is so true because like 1st of January, everyone has their, everyone sign up for the membership, right? I remember there was a time when I, because I go to gym last time, uh, you know, like almost every day before the pandemic. And it was like 1st January. I was like, it was so crowded. It was crazy before that, right? Because uh, like Christmas and holiday seasons, the gym was like nobody, nobody was there. But when 1st of January, everyone was there. I was like, what is happening? Um, so uh, the story that I want to share is that my friend, I remember when we both started our, you know, going to the gym together, she, on the first day, she shared with me this photo of a bikini, you know, lady, like strong, fit and sexy. She said, this is my goal, right? And it's so important to have the goal in mind, right? That it keeps you, it yes. keeps you moving, it keeps you far, right? Because although you, you won't see the results, you won't turn into a beginning model like overnight, but you will keep yourself going. It's like why people have vision board is because it reminds them of their vision. I, I agree with you. I, I think uh, like a, a vision board is, is really important. And it, and it needs to outline all of the things that you want to improve. Like maybe, you know, you have a six on the board, you know, that you're going to at least get six hours of sleep a night or, you know, you know, how many meals you plan on eating a day, how many calories you want to take in, how many workouts per week and like sticking to that board and then maybe visualizing the type of, of health and wellness that you want to have, you know? The other I would say too is, is kind of stay off the scale. I, I really, I don't believe in, in weighing yourself constantly. I really think it's how you feel, how you look in clothing. And I think people get obsessed with the numbers too much on the scale. You know, you know, when you look in the mirror, you're going to see, you're going to either like what you see or you're not. And I just don't think that the scale is healthy for people. Yeah, it's, I like when you said that it's all about how you feel about yourself, right? You're not going to come in from a gym and look in the mirror and then you'll see, wow, this is like my, my result, right? No, it's not going to happen. It's day after day, you know. Would you say that don't look at yourself every day, you know, just maybe one month later or even take a picture, right? Because then you will see the results, right? Yeah, no, it's not. And, um, you know, I think that you have to be committed to understanding that. It's like, you know, it's not just about like the weight loss. It's, it's about how you're feeling and getting yourself strong and balanced and coordinated. And, you know, I think that's what you have to look at. I think weight loss is just kind of the byproduct of hard work. You know, it's going to happen for you if you work diligently and you're consistent. So don't focus so much on that and focus kind of on everything else. Your habits, you know, instead of taking an elevator, take the stairs. You know, if you're going to a shopping mall, don't park close, park far, so that you have to walk a little bit further. So certain things like that make a lot, you know, the changing of your habits is huge. Yeah. So what is the best way to measure our progress? Uh, the best way to measure your progress, I would say, is is kind of like fitness tests for yourself. So whether it's testing your cardio, testing your strength, um, you know, whether you're doing like a posture check, like going for, you know, a posture um, assessment uh, where they look at, you know, how you carry yourself. You know, there's core strength tests that you can do, um, movement assessments. So you could do like lunge assessments and squat assessments. Um, and you could also do like, you know, reps, total reps. So like maybe you do, you can do 30 reps of a pull up, you know, or, Maybe you're doing a bench press with, you know, 45 pounds on each side. How many can you do? So there's certain uh, tests that you can make for yourself uh, that's, that, uh, you know, determine kind of your, your overall health and wellness. So when do we know it's the right time to push ourselves further or to, you know, to, you know break through to the, to the next level? Um, I think that you have to have a, a certain level of coordination and cardiovascular capacity for certain things and endurance, right? Um, once you have gotten yourself that base, you can push yourself. And I think um, you kind of always have to test that limit and get to a point where you're un you know, basically comfortable being uncomfortable is the saying, right? Where 
you know, you almost enjoy it being able to push yourself. Mm, yeah, yeah. So where do you see fitness in the future? Um, I, th I think hyper-personalization is a big thing. I think that during the pandemic, uh, a lot of people definitely have become uh, more conscious of themselves, more conscious of their mental health and self-care. And I think it's going to be, a lot of it's going to be catering at the individual and specificity and individualization. You know, they say it's like the age of the individual right now. And I, I totally agree with that. It's the way that technology is set up, um, it's really about you. So um, in a lot of ways, I think that's how fitness is going to trend. Why do you think fitness is important to cultivate a positive mental health and well-being? Um, I think it's, I think fitness is really important for mental health because, you know, it kind of takes your mind away from the stresses of life, right? You have that one hour where you're basically, it's just you in a room. It could be with other people. It could be by yourself. It could be with a trainer. But for that one hour, it kind of takes you away. It's almost like an escape. Um, and the pace slows down, right? You may be working really hard in here, but the pace of life and that feeling of almost like a like a rat race where you're just programmed to go from you know your job to home that changes a little bit. And um, I also think that strength changes your mental health and what you're able to endure, right? So if I'm able to to finish a hard class here and walk out of here feeling positive and happy, that's going to translate to everything else I do in my life, right? So I think that's important. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I feel more productive when I am, you know, when I have done my workout today, right? If I skip one day, I'll feel like, oh, you know, I don't feel like doing anything. I don't feel the energy, you know, I don't feel like doing things. <laughs> so, so it's really important. I don't, I don't know how to explain this, but you explain it so beautifully and so perfectly well. Um, is there any project? Are you currently working on any exciting projects for your business or for any clients? Or um, Currently, I'm just looking to expand and, and open more locations of what we do um, I'd like to, to branch off into into the US for sure um, I think that this this you know concept is uh, is super effective and I really believe that it's got the ability to be franchised and I think it can help a lot of people you know and change the way that we look at how we work out and I think that's really important moving forward um, right now you, you know all you see is is people putting screens on different equipment and thinking that, you know, technology is the way forward. I don't necessarily think that's true. I, I think that, you know, it's got to, the innovation has to start with, with us and how we move, not, you know, technology coming to us, right? So um, that's what we've done here. You know, we've really focused on um, optimizing human movement, right? So. So if let's say, um, People who are not in Canada right now and they want to work with you, how do they, is there a way for them to work with you virtually, yeah. you know? I, I train a lot of people virtually. Um, so I've trained people in Dubai, England, um, California, Chicago, New York, uh, Boston, all over the world. So Florida. So, you know, if they want to train with me, they can reach out. And my schedule is very busy, but I mean, you know, there's always, there's always times where I'd love to fit new people in. And, and I, I just love the ability to help people globally. I mean, I've always been that way. And, uh, and I love the fact that I can do virtual stuff now and, and train people anywhere around the world. That is awesome. That is good news. Um, do you do one-on-one -on -one or do you also like do a group program or workshop? Yeah, I, I do both. I do group and I do one on one. I love teaching classes. You know, it's it's one of those things where people kind of ask me like, "Aren't you like sick of teaching classes?" And no, I really feel like it brings out uh, the creative side in me, and um, I really enjoy how this class has evolved. So for me, it's just I'm passionate about helping people and and just evolving the class. Awesome. Before we move on to the final section, um, do you have anything that you really want to share? Perhaps I didn't ask you or didn't let you. Um, anything that I want to share? Uh, I just think that, you know, there's a lot of people right now that are, and we talked about this, but there's a lot of people out there struggling with mental health right now. Um, you know, it's, it's obviously a big issue. And I really, I really believe that a lot of it starts with working out and 
getting yourself uh, in the right mindset. You know, you're going to have bad days. You're going to have good days. But I really think that working out, taking care of yourself, eating the right foods is, is just super important. Thanks for that. Again, thank you so much for taking your time out. Now we're going to end with our final five rapid fire questions. And every question has to be answered in one word or one sentence maximum. Okay. All right. Um, the first question is, what is one thing you wish you knew earlier? Um, <laughs> it's a good one. Uh, understanding my core. Love it. <laughs> Second question. If you could live your life all over again, what would you do differently? Um, I think that I would probably have not taken my first basketball contract and finished my schooling. Okay. Third question. What is something you're trying to learn or curious about right now? Um, psychology. Human psychology. Human behavior, yeah. Human psychology, human behavior. The next question is, if you have five minutes and the whole world was listening to you, what would you say? Enjoy every moment of life. Really, you know, we're not here very long on this earth and you, you know, just really try to embrace every minute and make the most of your time, you know? Love it. The last question is, what brings you joy? Uh, helping others. Helping others and getting people to a good place in their lives. Like that's, that, that's what fulfills me is, is really helping other people. Beautiful. Now, I'm sure a lot of people, they want to get to know you more or work with you. Um, I know you mentioned about that. Uh, so can you tell us like, where is the best place to, 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 to find you online? Is it Instagram or is it your website or LinkedIn yeah. or YouTube? I would say Instagram. So um, my personal Instagram, I don't have any posts on there right now. I'm really focusing on the business Instagram. So uh, it's really cool. We have a lot of really unique content. So go to Be With Core. So B-E-W-I-T-H-C-O-R-E -E on Instagram. There's some amazing content on there uh, with some of our other trainers that we've collaborated with. And some videos are funny, some are artistic. Um, we've really kind of pushed the envelope with our Instagram. Uh, but if you wanted to message me any direct questions, you can find my name on Instagram and just send me a direct message. All right, thank you so much. All right, guys, I hope you love this episode. Remember, to visit the show note to find all the links that we have for you today. Remember to take a screenshot of this episode and share it on your IG story and tag me and Joshua on Instagram and we can reshare and connect with you so we know that you tune in today so that we can support you personally. And our Instagram handle is at findjoyjoy underscore podcast and I also put Joshua's Instagram link in the show note below so make sure you follow us if you haven't already. And also hit the subscribe button so you never miss another episode episode coming every Wednesday and I will always leave you the same way as I live with every other episode show up the world needs you and you need you thanks for listening and I wish you all a joyful and amazing day ahead thank you Joshua for having me appreciate it thank you thank you